Welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashemi. We also get to look at the Women's Football League match, the 11 fixtures on the course of the show. I will have uh, other topics uh, lined up on the show this morning for you. Uh, and I'm not alone in the studio. I've got uh, Noah Samson uh, joining me on the show this lovely um, Wednesday uh, in the city of Abuja. Noah, welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. The pleasure is mine. All right, let's uh, start with this uh, story coming from the Ministry of sports where uh, the federal government from the sports minister says Nigeria has the capacity to host the 2030 Commonwealth Games bearing that uh, no African country since inception of the Commonwealth Games has hosted uh, the games and uh, from uh, the sports minister he said he's going to table the proposal to the president so that they can look how uh, Nigeria can host the 2030 Commonwealth Games, though he will not be in the office by then, but probably that proposal will be there. And any sports minister coming in um, will be looking at this proposal and also maybe the, the new president uh, before time. Uh, probably we can see an African country and Nigeria hosting the Commonwealth Games in 2030. Yeah, it will be a thing of joy to see an African country hosting this Commonwealth Games because uh, not that we don't have the, the population or the manpower to host this, but I think because of the facilities, it's a major problem. No, sorry, excuse me, no um, enough st uh, facilities, no stadiums, no um, enough things to make sure the game, um, we host, we're able to host this uh, competition. So I think if the proposal has been submitted by the minister to the presidency where the, the other facilities be needed, it's been put in place. I think we can host the World Cup, not only the uh, Commonwealth Cup, uh, Commonwealth can host the World Cup, the Nations Cup, and other forms of uh, any forms of competition so far. Okay, uh, talking about facilities, uh, if you look at Abuja, we have one of the best, uh, some of the best facilities in the country in Abuja, Delta and Asaba. That is Delta and Edo, I beg your pardon. Uh, but these three um, locations I just mentioned, uh, then probably maybe uh, Port Harcourt, uh, and then um, I think just these uh, four place, uh, locations I've mentioned, do you think that is enough for us to hold? It's not just uh, hosting the Commonwealth Games you, because you, have to, you are going to host the world. Because uh, when it comes to the Commonwealth Games, it's only Commonwealth nations um, that uh, participate in the Games. But uh, so far so good, from these four locations, do you think uh, the facilities that are on ground are enough? Probably maybe uh, add to it or improve on all these facilities to host the uh, 2030 Commonwealth Games. We just need to add more to those uh, facilities and um, work on these particular facilities we have. Because if we are to look at these facilities, actually to my own um, understanding, I, I don't think they are world class. They are just there. So you need to just work on these facilities and build more. Apart from that, apart from facilities, you know you are bringing a whole, as in countries, um, a lot of countries to the country for this competition. You have to have standard hotels, not only um, just uh, hotels that are not to standard. You know, some of these some of these guys have stayed in one of the best hotels so far in the world. So you have to improve on your hotel, on your hoteling system also too. Then those are part of the facilities we should work on also too. And those um, facilities in um, um, Abuja, Edo, Delta, the Patakot, uh, they are good but not good enough. So it needs to be improved on and build new facilities. In fact, if they can even build your facilities, I think it will be one of the best so far. It will be one of the best so far. When you talk about world-class facilities, if you go to the Samuel Ogbumdia Stadium, I can tell you, you have world-class facilities when they hosted uh, the National Sports uh, Festival in 2020 and also the last time out in Delta State, uh, uh, Sabah, precisely where the um, National Games, uh, the last one, was held. But uh, looking at that, the Commonwealth Games is not an easy one. Probably we might be able to just host it definitely we have to submit bid first before we can be uh, maybe if they grant us uh, uh, the go the right to host it then we can be looking at our facilities and then like you mentioned hotel uh, we have the games village there because definitely they have to improve build yes, new it, games it, village exactly. so that they can uh, at least welcome the athletes that will be coming in all right let's uh, move away from the commonwealth uh, game story and go straight to market morocco where the second game the friendly international friendly uh grade a between nigeria and the eagles of mali ended in favor of the eagles of mali the other eagles uh, <laughs> was uh, over the clash super of, one clash of, eagles. clash of eagles and the other eagles spine home two nil first goal uh, coming in from uh, botsuman uh, and then before uh, getting the second goal in the, uh, I think it's it's seven, seven minutes, minutes yes. of that game and it was just um, that was all but uh, from in my own uh, opinion I think the Super Eagles 
they, they, they played well. The possession, we possessed both first half and second half, we possessed that game, but at the end of the day, we couldn't create chances up front. Yeah, and I think, you think the second goal came from just a, a small a defensive mistake from, it seems, um, uh, Izzy was trying to give a cross, then give it to the player that scored the goal. So I think um, they should just try and work. Uh, no team is perfect. These are this, this, the main reasons of this friend is just for you to just look at yourselves and you know, try to work on the lapses you have and, and try to work on them so that when you want to play a competitive game, you have to work on those lapses. And, and those lapses are main. So, um, and I think um, they should, the, the NFL should not use this, um, the, the, the Mali game to judge Finidi. I think they should just give the opportunity. Is this is a sec uh, apart from the match against Ghana, this is the second one. The likes of Isero, they, I mean, I know many matches they lost before, <laughs> and they, no, no one did into them. So they shouldn't just use this to judge him. I think um, the players actually like this um, particular coach, and they want to give everything for him. So we just need to work on uh, some of our lapses and that as well. Okay, we just need to work on some of our lapses and uh, Finidi George himself coming out to say um, because of um, some of the absentees, the, like of, uh, the likes of Victor Simon, Victor Boniface, who was injured, thank God his back training, Tai Wawuni, uh, we know that uh, there was a pull-out from Tyrone Ibuehi and also we had um, uh, Tai Wawuni also pulled out from this uh, friendly. So uh, he has come out to say some of his key players were not present. Can we say because Those are the that? things I don't like hearing at all. You cannot say a country of 200 million population. You mean because uh, Osime, uh, uh, Awuni, and um, the likes of uh, Tyron Tar and uh, they didn't play that's why we lost? No. The other okay, players. Oyedika also, uh, Oyedika also uh, left. Look at this young man. The, the two of them. Tamimu, and Tamimu. Moses Simon also got in injured in, in the course of that game. Look at Tamiu Benjamin. Look at the, the way he played against the Ghana defense. People were surprised. So you have the kind of player in Nigeria League and you didn't go to Nations Cup. So you should just go and spread your spread your um, your tentacles and you see men no players. So there shouldn't be because there's no okay, what of if Umobi is retired? I'm sorry, uh, uh Osimhen is retired. Would you say because Osimhen is retired, you don't, you won't win matches again? So you should just go. There are there are many players in the, in the Nigeria professional league and apart from there are many players outside uh, playing in, in Europe and other um, 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 um well, league so far which are they are doing they are doing good why not bring them and invite them if these players are not you cannot say because of Simeon is not uh it's not the game uh wood is not the guys that we lost the game no that should not be an excuse okay that shouldn't be an excuse for us uh, uh finiti judge after that game in this post match uh, conference he said um he misses some of his key players uh that was what uh, added to that uh, uh defeat all right let, let's uh, leave uh, the nigerian versus mali friendly game it's just a friendly but it's a good one that uh, we have seen some good signs in the team uh possession wise we were there but couldn't create a chance up front uh, in that uh, game now let's come back home and look at the mpf quickly where aqua united now has confirmed about ganiru muhammad as their new head coach this man has won the league with canopilas his experience in the nigerian premier football league uh he know what it is and now uh after seeing out some games now aqua united uh, from paul bassi that is the chairman of aqua united confirming baba ganiru to actually help them out of relegations water yeah they need they need they need, they need any any help they can now they can afford now because they are 17 on the table so being 17 on the table you should you that's 17 on the table and having 31 points so you can see they are really struggling so they need someone who um is an experienced coach and since this man has played is one is he has won the league with canopilas before so the experience is what they need so they don't they need to bring every hand possible so that they will go ahead okay go ahead let, let's look at the nigerian league so far so good uh, we've played uh, 27 games. We are heading for match uh, day 28 and the course of the weekend. Um, what's your assessment so far? Second stanza firing uh, from all the clubs struggling we, we've seen uh, now we have um, Enugu Rangers we have um, Remo Stars we have Plato United there we have Eniba uh, the top teams I just mentioned Enugu Rangers is at the top of the table Lobby Stars second we have um, um, Eniba International on the fourth position Remo Stars is there on the third position and we have Plato United also uh, we have Plato United on the third position I beg your pardon now Eniba is fourth all of these teams um, so far, so good. I think the circumstances have lived up to it. Uh, have lived up to expectation. Yeah, it's not something. I, I, I would I will say it. Uh, it's not a farmers league where you know. Okay, these are the ones that will, as usual. Now these are the usual people. So it's really been surprising. Very competitive. You can see the players putting all their effort. And it seems uh, it seems every year we are getting better. And that is it too. So it don't, uh, we just need to just keep improving and you know try to get. I think if we could get 
foreign players also that want to come and play the Nigerian league because most of these players are actually Nigerians. If you look at the uh, look at all of them, so at least we can have people like you from Ghana, from the likes of uh, even you to come and play for us in our league. So I think it's going to improve everything. Well. Okay, I can tell you for free that we have one player that will be coming in from Scotland mm -hmm. to play in the Nigerian <laughs> Premier Football League, and don't forget we also had a Brazilian yeah. that played in the Nigerian Premier League, and also a coach by name Everton. So let's see uh, if foreign stars will start coming to grace uh, the Nigerian Premier Football League. Now let's uh, leave the MPFL and talk women's uh, club football, where it is action packed uh, Wednesday, March the 11th in the Nigerian Women's Football League. You just saw a video highlight between Heartland uh, FC ladies and then Nasara Amazons in March Day 10. Now we have uh, fixtures for March the 11th uh, today across all venues and it's two groups. We have Group A and Group B but let's look at Group A fixtures. Adamawa Queens, uh, we play Nigerators of Abuja. Royal Queens, uh, we entertain Confluence Queens of Kogi. While Abia Angels will be away to Heartland Queens of Uwiri which is going to be another Oriental Derby because over the weekend in Nigerian Premier Football League, it was Heartland men against Enugu Rangers, which was one Oriental Derby. And now the ladies will also be involved in, in their own Oriental Derby against Abia Angels, which is a very close state. We have Nasara Amazon who lost my attempt to Heartland Queens. Now play Danaz. Ladies, I think uh, for the Women's League, it's also getting interesting and interesting. But the big game for today is Heartland Queens against Abia Angels because it's an Oriental Derby. Why? Also, in the course of the weekend, Heartland FC men against Enugu Rangers men in the Nigerian Premier Football League. So the ladies will also experience theirs. That uh, we, are, we can't wait to just watch the, uh, the match because that's it for the, uh, from the clip you played before we, we started the show, the Heartland versus um, the National United ladies. You can see how throughout the game you can see how, pos how they possessed the, the, the National ladies. So I can't wait to watch the match. I believe the Heartland is going to win. The Heartland ladies will win the match. You believe Heartland Queens is going to yeah, defeat and I, don't know, I, and I don't know the number. I don't know the girl. But I can't I can remember any. The girl number nine. She's very fantastic. Her name is Jane, but the other name is fantastic player. Uh, she is from uh, she's an Abuja groom. I will, I will and have to see her uh, <laughs> with Super Falcons. Taking away. Probably we might see her in Super Falcons. Let's quickly have uh, the Group B uh, fixtures. Also, games will be coming up in Group B uh, where we have uh, Bias and Queens against Remo Stars. Ladies, big one. FC Robo Queens of Lagos. We take on Ekiti Queen. That is uh, Ekiti Queens. That is an, uh, another derby. It's a Southwest derby. We have a Doe Queens against Sunshine Queens. And Sunshine Queens is talking tough because they are neighbors uh, on those states. And Edo State, a very close state. Now they are talking tough that they want to end uh, Edo Queens' uh, 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 unbeaten run. River Angels against Delta Queens. So it's all derby yeah. all round in Group A and in Group B. E. We have about two derbies in Group Edo B: Queens Robo also. Queens and Ekiti Queens and River Angels against Delta Queens. Big one. Yes, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, what we call um, interesting future uh, fixture, fixture. So with us, uh, with us. I would like to see, uh, and from what I'm predicting so far, I'm seeing much of goals will be scored in this comp in this uh, feature so far. Okay, goals with goals, 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 galore for Edo Queens. They have been fantastic. Let's quickly have uh, the table. Let's just look at the table. How they are standing after March Day 10. We have a uh, Heartland Queens, uh, surprisingly, who are on top of the table in Group A with 18 points. We have Nasara Amazons who lost to them in March Day 10 uh, with 17 points, just one point separating them. But Nasara Amazons have more gold, uh, plus 10. Uh, to uh, Heartland Queens plus eight. We have a uh, Confluent Queens of Kogi, Kogi on the third position with 17 points also. Danaz Ladies, Abia Angels, Adamawa Queens, Nigerites, and Royal Queens who occupy the bottom of the table with just nine points. In Group B, Bayasa Queens is stopping with 19 points. We have Rivers Angels who is second with 18 points and Edo Queens follow the powerhouses in Group B. I was surprised when I saw this draw for the three powerhouses to be in Group B. They would have missed some of them in Group yeah, A. Exactly. Then we have FC Robo Queens of Lagos who is on the fourth position with 15 points. We have Remo Stars uh, Ladies on the fifth position, 12 points. We have uh, Delta Queens uh, on the sixth position with 12 uh, uh, points and then Sunshine Queens of Akure is on the seventh position with 10 points and Ekiti Queens who are newcomers to the league are occupying the bottom of the table in Group B on eight points and minus nine goal uh, difference. All right, let's leave uh, the women's football and talk about the cadet games. That is the under-17. Wafu now. Wafu B uh, under-17 competition. Now Ghana has been given uh, the hosting right for the 2024 edition. 
I know I don't know what is wrong with uh, what Ghana has now. They've, they've really they've been on the radar so far, and uh, they hosted the this, those concluded all African games are now this. So it's a it's a big uh, one for for them. I just pray in a couple of years to come, Nigeria will be also be like this um, hosting competitions like that because apart from that, it's a form of um, revenue generation for the country because you have people coming, people have to lodge with, uh, lodge in hotels, buy things also, and so I just hope. Um, when we build our facilities up to this extent to start hosting such competitions too. Because we start hosting such competitions and Nigeria Under-17 will be there also uh, to participate in the Wafu B Under-17 uh, tournament where they will qualify to the AFCON Under-17 from the West African uh, region. All right, let's stay staying on the continent this time around. Let's go straight to CAF where CAF have confirmed the kickoff time for Rivers United against USM Odias, the defending champions of the CAF Confederations Cup first leg quarterfinal game that will be happening at the uh, Goswell Akpabi International Stadium in New York. That game was scheduled for 5 p.m. originally uh, Nigerian time, but now it has been moved forward to 2 p.m. when this concern would be scorching. <laughs> uh, when I saw this story, I said Rivers United have something under their skin. Yeah, I, they really <laughs> want to put these guys under the hot sun. And, and you know, it's, mistaken, it's hot in Nigeria at this, at this point yeah, but in time. It seems, it's an, they're, they're playing against an, an Nigeria team. Also, yes, USM Ogia. Yeah, it's an Nigeria team which uh, they are, the place is so hot. So, but the, the advantage I know who have the reverse that have that because some of these guys are fasting, so it's really difficult for. <laughs> but no, wish, fasting doesn't stop you to play, but, no, but it, it's fate. It even make you play very yeah, well. Yeah, but under the hot sun, it's not easy. Nigeria <laughs> is hot, you know. The weather is hot, so we just pray uh, the reverse United players just use that opportunity to just deal with those guys. They win this game against USM Jazz of Algeria. They are the defending champions of the CAF Confederations Cup, and now that game will be played by 2 p.m. Nigerian time. Why, Why was it changed? It's a problem. Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, 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 I think Rivers United actually requested for uh, the uh, time to be changed, and you know, Uyo particularly uh, is used to be uh, it's raining also in Uyo yeah. at this point in time, so they had to just move move the match forward. Uh, it, it, if it was uh, maybe in the northern region, I would say the sun would be scorching. Surprisingly, uh, the sun might just be of a favorable, yeah. uh, maybe the weather might just be a favorable one to both teams by that 2 p.m. But I know that region uh, rain as as it's Stands right now, even during the uh, Hamatan uh, season, yes. rain used to fall in that region. But let's see how it goes because definitely, when I saw this time, I know that Rivers United want to use the advantage of the hot sun yes. in this game. We but uh, pray does, we pray does, uh, 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 that I game. think uh, the North African teams also normally do this to us psychologically before you come, they defeat you on the pitch, they defeat you, they will not give you the best of welcome yeah, and exactly. whatever. But let's see how it goes. We are just praying that Rivers United get this one right and qualify for the semi final. It's still it's a two legged uh, uh, affair. First leg here, and then the reverse feature in one week's time in uh, Algeria. All right, let's uh, leave uh, uh, the continent of Africa and go straight to Europe. Now we'll be looking at the Women's Champions League uh, quarterfinal second leg game between these teams that will be coming up tonight. Uh, uh, the first leg. Uh, now let's look at uh, the, the the fixture. Leon Feminis against the uh, Befica Ladies is two one in the first leg in favor of uh, Leon's Feminis. They went away to uh, far away to Portugal to beat Befica Ladies. That is super. Falcons uh, uh, midfielder Mastro, uh, that is Chris Tuchebe's team, that is Benfica now mm -hmm. against a team that has won the Women's Champions League more than any other team. Six times they've won it, they've won it more than any other team, like I said, that's Lyon's uh, ladies. Uh, the second leg will be happening in, uh, in France tonight. Yeah, the, um, the second leg, I, I think um, the uh, Leon, uh, Leon guy, um, ladies will be able to win the match because of the experience they have. And the second match is Chelsea against the Ajax, uh, Chelsea ladies against Ajax ladies. From the first match we watched, you can see the Chelsea only made uh, use use of the opportunities they had. The Ajax uh, ladies actually played better than Chelsea. But and now they have the, um, Chelsea have three goal advantage. Um, first leg. First leg. Uh, so to me, I think it's a it's a walk away for Chelsea ladies. Okay. So, so a win for the Lyon ladies also too. Okay, win for the Lyon ladies. Let's see how that game goes. Uh, don't forget that football uh, surprise uh, miracles used to happen in football, <laughs> and that that, that scoreline can be turned around. We've seen uh, uh, where PSG was four goal up against uh, Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona. First leg that was in 2015, and at the end of the day, the game ended in favor of uh, Barcelona after the return leg in Cap Nou. All right, let's uh, leave the Women's Champions League and look at the Euro 2024. Now the group stage has been completed. Big one, Georgia 
surprisingly for the first time qualifying for uh, and qualifying for a tournament of this magnitude and it was a big one for Georgia after that penalty shootout against they Greece. I all I believe they are straight there to the, they are straight to the heroes <laughs> to the for those who those you know add to the team but I don't think they will, will perform much better uh, at the competition. Oh, you don't think they will perform no, no, much no, no, better no, no, no. now let, let's look at uh, the game between uh, Poland and Wales. Poland against Wales it was penalty shootout yeah, exactly. and uh, at the end of the day um, Will, uh, Wales crashed out of the comp of the uh, qualifying series, and now we have Poland. Uh, quickly, before you react to that, let just uh, let me just uh, read out uh, the groupings. We have in Group A, we have Germany, the host country. We have uh, um, Scotland, we have Hungary and Switzerland in Group A, and then in Group E, we have uh, Spain, Croatia, Italy, and uh, Albania. Italy is the defending champion in Group C. We have Slovenia, we have Denmark, Serbia, England. We have uh, also who were runner up in the last edition in Group D. We have uh, Poland and um, Poland who made it through um, after beating Wales uh, in the penalty, penalty shootout. Shot. But for Italy and England, if you look at Group A, we have um, we have Germany, Scotland, Hungary, and Switzerland in Group A. I'm saying Germany, Scotland probably going to the next round. That that's the truth. Then probably Switzerland. I don't know, but I think Germany, Scotland to be we're going to the next round. Okay. Uh, what, surprisingly, Ukraine. Despite all what is going on in that country, Shenshenko was, in fact, uh, the happiest man uh, last night after they got the better of their opponent in that 2-1. Uh, uh, Chelsea's uh, Mogdi getting the second goal, the, uh, the winning goal. And uh, despite all of the happenings in Ukraine, they made it through to Euro 2024. Yeah, I think that, that should be a kind of um, well, call it motivation for them to just go to the competition and perform better. But I doubt it. And that was the truth. Because they can't, I'm not sure they can do much more like the, the acts of other teams in, uh, in the competition. Because you have Germany going to the competition. You have um, sorry, Germany, Spain. Um, you have um, uh, England. Those are teams who, you know, have stars, have great players who just want to just go and just win the competition. So it's going to be a very tough one for Ukraine. Okay, it's going to be a very tough one for Ukraine. In Group F, we have uh, Turkey, we have Georgia, Portugal, and the Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that it's a very dicey one in that group. I can't really say who's going to qualify for now. Okay. All right. Uh, before we go on the show, let's quickly look at uh, the international friendly games uh, results that were played yesterday. Uh, we have more of the friendly games played because uh, it was uh, the last time out for, uh, it was the uh, last day for the FIFA window uh, because most, most of the players will be going over to their various clubs. But let's quickly run over some of the results. We have Denmark against uh, Faroe Island. Uh, uh, Slovenia against Portugal after 11 games on beating run for Portugal under Martinez the loss to Slovenia 2-0 in that game all right that is where we're going to be leaving it on 360 sports you were something thanks for joining me on the show this lovely Wednesday the pleasure is mine all right that is it on the program 360 sports I am Emmanuel Fashimin say thanks for watching